All right, well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry Solar video late Sunday night because I've been determined to get this thing up and running. But before I get into that, of course, GenetrySolar.com. GenetrySolar.com is where you can find custom power jack inverters, spare parts replacement parts for your power jack inverters. As well as Genetry Solar Inverters and uh, Wi-Fi boards, of course. Uh, this particular unit is a 12,000 watt prototype, so it's a pre-production unit. But we do have the 6,000 watt units. Um, they are on their way. Two shipments coming. The first shipment is supposed to be here any day. Second shipment should be here by the end of March, early April. So. We still have some left on the second shipment that you can secure. So anyway, I have my 12K here finally done. Again, this is a prototype, but it is finally done. Uh, as you guys know, I had to replace the main board here. This is the main board it came with. There's something faulty with this main board. Don't know yet. And we don't know if that's what caused this control board to fail. We're not sure. But the new main board that I did install is actually out of a version 9 power jack 15,000 watt unit. I did add an extra cap. You can see that I took one of the caps off of this one and added that to the other one because we want six caps on our inverters. You'll also notice that I did a little experimenting here. I cut this off because the stock power jack rainbow cable connector you can see how long it is. This is cut right off of it. Okay, it's pretty long. The longer, the worse in this case, because you can introduce noise. It's harder to drive the FETs. The driver board has more trouble driving FETs. And especially considering that I have the older HY3810 FETs in the prototype unit, we wanted to make sure that this was as short as possible. So we did shorten up quite a bit. I took about eight inches off of it, off the one that's actually in the inverter right now. Shorten that up and all of the GS inverters going forward, I believe, I'll have to confirm that with Sid, but our goal is either to get PowerJack to shorten this up for us, or we're going to be installing our own Sid designed main board. Um, yeah, we're going to have almost nothing left inside of our GS inverters that PowerJack actually uses. Um, so we have our own custom transformer, obviously, our own custom control board, our own custom case. So the only thing left in there, really, when you think about it, that PowerJack uses is the main board. <clears throat> so it's kind of, uh, we're, you know, we're kind of um, going all custom, which uh, is fine because that's what we chose to do, to be able to get what we want in our inverters. And I'm sorry about the flicker. I have these brand new super bright 10,000 lumen, um, well that's what they claim at least, expensive shop lights up and uh, they're definitely causing some flicker here. So anyway, I've got the inverter set up to 51 volts and for those wondering, in standby, uh, or with the inverter off, excuse me, with the inverter actually off so it's not running, but it is connected to battery. According to the power supply, it's using about 300 milliamps of energy. That 300 milliamps is no doubt coming from not only the extra caps, but also the Wi-Fi board as well that's installed. So 300 milliamps, so when the inverter is off, you can expect between two and 300 milliamps, that's at 51 volts. So keep that in mind, that's with the inverter completely off. Let's go ahead and power it on. No doubt it sounds a little throatier with the added fan as well as the larger case. Um, there's more of a substantial noise there, but it's not as loud as you would think it is. So the inverter is running 51 volts, about 900 milliamps, and it's running fine. Let me go ahead and turn this overhead light off so that you can see this screen better. Sorry if my finger is getting in the way. So 
there you have it, we're running. This is, of course, a brand new um, interface that Sid came up with to kind of make things easier. We have so much information to squeeze into this screen here, especially when you're talking about Daisy, three phase, um, grid tie, all that other stuff. It's a lot of information to squeeze on just this page. So obviously Sid had to make some modifications here in order to make this work, to fit everything. And yeah, there's a lot going on here. So of course, uh, if you saw my previous video, you'll, you'll notice that we, uh, we have the new oscilloscope, which is working very well. There's that little blip there in the middle. I already explained why that is. We should be able in software to filter that out but um, the sine wave looks pretty much perfect. There's a little bit of a hip and a bump there, here and there, but it's nothing that's ever going to be a concern, even for the most sensitive electronics that you would have. This transformer runs very efficiently. It's running very cool. Um, there's no doubt about that, it runs pretty cool. I have yet to do any load testing, so that is going to be coming next. The load testing, i got to get it on my batteries, um, and uh, yeah, so that's cool. That's the world's first GS. I'm sorry this is out of focus a little bit here. I got, the, got it on the wide-angle lens, so I, don't, I can only have to hold the phone way up in the air. Um, the world's first GS 12-kilowatt inverter. Pretty cool indeed. Uh, very exciting. So um, here's the thermistors. This is a fully loaded inverter. It has seven thermistors in total. Four on the transformer, three on the main board. So because the inverter supports charge, we wanted to put a thermistor on the DC side FETs because when the energy is going from the grid to the battery, it's going to heat those up. So we added a thermistor there on the DC side FETs. So now we have a total of seven thermistors inside this. Of course, it's too much to fit in this page. You just scroll down. But you can see the temperatures are looking really, really well. So with that in mind, all the extra settings are here. Um, there you have it. I mean, not much really to say more. Sorry, finger in the way. Not much really to say more. I've got a lot of cleaning on my bench to do. I mean, it's a mess, obviously, but um, not much to say more about the inverter itself. It runs really good. The sine wave is beautiful. But of course, a beautiful sine wave at idle is great. But what's it going to look like when it's under load? That is what we're going to determine next. Now that I know that the inverter works that <laughs> it doesn't have a faulty mainboard in it i am going to get this hooked up to my battery bank we've had some pretty nice sunny days lately i only have about a kilowatt of solar hooked up right now uh, it's, actually it's less than that it's about 800 watts of solar um so i only have about 800 watts of solar hooked up right now so i can't do any long consistent load testing but I can certainly try to hammer this with as much as I possibly can. And um, that would, you know, we've got a new induction cooker that we can use. That thing is uh, five or six kilowatts. Um, you know, we, we've got a, a jacuzzi that we could turn on. I mean, there's things that we can do. It's going to be more difficult without a standard hot water heater. Um, we might use some hot water and then put it in high performance mode, which automatically activates the uh, um, the heating elements inside. So I will do what I can to really load this thing down. That is the goal. Um, but this, again, is a pre-production unit. The post-production unit, post-production, the actual production unit, that one is going to have some tweaks and, and so on in order to, to get it the way that we want it. So, there you have it. It is late Sunday night. I am tired. I'm ready to go to bed. I've been working on this nonstop. And like any new product, as Sid reminded me a couple times or more, there can be frustrations at the beginning. And getting this thing going has definitely been a little bit on the frustrating side, but that's, that's part of the development process. Our GS inverters, um, well... The 6 kilowatt inverters are running perfectly fine. Can't wait to get those in your hands so that you can actually enjoy them. 
So there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great night, and take care.